Uh, welcome back, everybody. Another episode of Everybody Needs a Nudge. Um, I've got a, another guest because that's what I do. I bring a guest on once a week. Uh, this week's guest is Steve DeWire, a cousin of mine. Say hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. <laughs> I knew that. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I, it's like the corniest, stupidest right, joke. Yeah. Dad jokes. Yeah. We tell a lot of dad jokes on this show. So, so Steve-O and I played some golf yesterday and uh, I convinced him to come on the podcast. He's very concerned. He does not going to have anything to talk about. Um, but we know, Root Bear, that everybody has stuff to talk about, right? I'm a little more worried about my golf game than I am about what Yeah, I'm you should worry about, about your golf game. <laughs> that was pretty bad. Yeah. I, I played pretty well on the back. You played great on the back. So, uh, but let's get into it. Let's let's talk about a little bit about what's going on. My week in review. Um, Rose is playing, my Rose is playing volleyball. That's my it. Rose. Yeah, I, I know. I love how you say that. That melts your heart. It does. I know. What's going on with the uh, Marine sweatshirt? My boyfriend. Oh, she just moved in with her boyfriend, Steve-O. Oh, and you're already stealing his clothes? <laughs> Absolutely. Our clothes. <laughs> oh, our clothes. That's how it happens. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, that's how it happens. He's uh, toast. He's done. Um, so she's playing volleyball, which I'm super pumped for because she didn't, she does cheerleading, but and which is a team, but this is more like a kind of a conventional team sport. So I'm psyched for her. She likes volleyball. So she's playing some volleyball. Um, Annabelle's rowing in the head of the Charles. No way. Yeah. That's pretty damn cool. Yeah. So her team at BBNN, they got a boat. And uh, so a four, four person boat. It's and necessary. Yeah, yeah. You need a boat. <laughs> so they got one. And uh, she's rowing in the head of the child. That's pretty cool. That is really cool. You're going to go? Yeah. 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 October 23rd. You want to come? Love to. Yeah. Uh, Emily's cousin was going to row in it, I think, the year that COVID canceled it. And he didn't get to do it. Oh. Yeah, it was and that was it? One shot deal? Yeah. He, he was getting sponsored by a, a gym uh, that he was working at. Really? Yeah. What's that big chain in Boston? Kind of high-end fitness. Planet Fitness? Equinox. Equinox. Oh, wow. He was the uh, PR person. He did PR for Equinox. Really? Yeah. And then one and done, he couldn't. Yeah, they they sponsored a team, and then yeah, it didn't happen. That's too bad. Now he doesn't work there anymore. So 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 no uh, no head of the child. But nope. Annabelle was doing head of the child. Hank's playing his hockey. That's really what's going on in my life. Uh, I took my father, my mother, and my father down to the Newport Boat Show over the weekend. You ever been to a boat show, Steve? I have with my father-in-law. Yeah, very. Uh, he's a big boat guy. He is a big boat guy. Yeah, a lot of people spending a lot of money on boats. Yeah. The economy did not look like it was struggling down in Newport this weekend. <laughs> I mean, every boat was like a gazillion dollars, and there was a million people, probably mostly kicking the tires. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I my my thought is a lot of people bought boats when the pandemic happened. Yeah, because they had some extra cash, had extra time. Yeah, and now that's all gone. <laughs> yeah, so I think you're going to see a lot of used boats on the market for Ooh. probably pretty good, pretty good deals. Wow, that's an interesting boat sales forecast by yeah. Steve-O. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and your knowledge base is on what's what's your knowledge base for that? None, zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Don't own a boat. You used to have a boat. Don't ask questions. Whiskey Tango. The Whiskey Tango. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. W T. White trash. Yeah. That's how what, did we come up? <laughs> how did we come up with that name? <laughs> because that's you. a yeah. That's like a. I think it's a police term. Like we've got Whiskey Tangos. Um. So white trash. You should know. Your wait, boyfriend <laughs> is a state trooper. I'm not one. I understand. But you guys don't talk like that. No. <laughs> Here bravo, I bravo, I'm uh, headed home. <laughs> yeah, when, when you go home tonight, I want you to call him a whiskey tango and, and see what he says. See what he says. <laughs> yeah. Breaker, breaker, I'm on my way. Over. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how he ends phone calls. I got to go over. Over. Um, Under. So we were talking about the, so how we got him on the podcast, yesterday we were talking about the podcast. And Luke was with us, my friend Luke, who we're trying to get on the podcast. And he said that I talk about myself too much on the podcast. I don't feel like that's the case. Well, I, I root beer, root beer. No, she's not. I mean, it's your yeah. podcast. Right. <laughs> that's what I said. Well, it's just like they said, like Jimmy Fallon's show, right? The yeah. beginning of Jimmy Fallon's show, he talks about Jimmy Fallon, right? Things that happened in his life and jokes, and like, and then it goes on to the guests. But yeah, yeah. I think that's. What I think doing. it's fine, I right? Think, I think totally fine. Okay, because he got me. I was like thinking about it last night. Do I talk about don't myself? Don't let him get in your head. Yeah, he's taking up a little space in my head. But I guess got off a call with a guy from... He's actually kind of big, so he's probably taking a lot of space. I've lost, man. I have a, well. <laughs> Rent is expensive. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is expensive. And I just got off the phone with a guy from Connecticut who said he listens to the podcast. How about that? that? Yeah. That. It's one of our tens of tens of listeners that we have <laughs> down in Connecticut. Yeah. I love that. Uh, I don't know. It's an insurance commercial. The guy's like doing the things. He's like mayhem. 
Oh he's yeah, he's doing the thing on the side of the road. He goes, "This is going to get tens and tens of views." Yeah, yeah, that's where I stole it from. <laughs> and then the guy, he's doing like the TikTok, uh, yeah, yeah, the latest TikTok yeah. challenge or yeah, whatever. That guy's great. That's one of the best characters in that's the commercials great, right now. Great, great character. Mayhem. Um, so I keep going on my walks. Now they walk. So I go on walk. I think I was telling you to walk the elliptical. I watch some videos. I just wanted to point out a couple of very interesting things about, and you'll like this, about Harvard that I didn't know. Do you know why it's called the Ivy League? Oh, I, I just assumed because most like schools like that prestigious have ivy growing on the walls. So there's two schools of thought. One is way back in the day, they started a football league and there were two, there were four schools in it. It was like Harvard, Columbia, Princeton, and Yale or something. So there were four I V. Okay. That's one theory. Okay. The other theory is, or the other reason is that I guess when they graduate, a lot of kids plant ivy around campus, and then when they come back to campus as alumni, they get to go see how much their ivy has grown. Gotcha. thought that was a pretty interesting little tidbit about the Ivy League. So we, Annabelle had a college counseling thing, and she's at Buckingham Brown and Nichols. Buckingham Brown and Nichols is right next to Harvard, mm-hmm. and I think everybody, you know, a lot of the, kid, a lot of the parents aspire to have their kids go to uh, Ivy League schools. And the whole, one of the kind of underpinnings of the college counseling was essentially, hey, just because your kid doesn't get into a specific subset of schools doesn't may, mean they're a failure. Because I think there's a, just a lot of pressure for them to get into these Ivy League schools. So I told Annabelle, don't worry about it. <laughs> She's not going to get in anyway, so I was like, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm not putting any pressure on you. You can go to Massasoit. Yeah, you go wherever you want. I actually just watched a movie on this recently this past week called the F it list. F it? I mean, it's a four letter word that starts with F. Oh. We don't swear on this podcast. No, we don't. But PG thirteen list. I think it was on Netflix and it basically was talking about that. Really? Yeah. Very interesting. Good watch. There you go. There's the there's the show rec we pretty much make a recommendation once a week. Yeah. Yes. That, yeah. So that's it. The F it list. Excellent. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. A um, couple of corrections from last week, and then we'll get into Steve-O. The first correction is we were talking about the Chinese culture and how they put, uh, like, paper products, paper, little paper um, uh, memorabilia. Origami? No, it's not called origami. That's the correction. It's called Joss paper, J-O-S-S paper. And essentially in these Asian cultures, they would, like, if you died, right, and you were Asian... <laughs> Two hypotheticals, I hope. Yes. <laughs> wow, Jesus. I would, and, and I wanted you to have a boat in your afterlife. I would go to the store. They have this, these stores, and you go in and you buy a paper boat, and you burn the paper boat, and supposedly that sends the boat up into the sky, into the afterlife with you. So I get a burnt boat? No, you, I think the boat comes back together like uh, a phoenix. Okay. All right. Yeah. $400 million is spent on this stuff in Taiwan alone. Wow. Good business. Cash cow. Cash cow. Well, death and taxes, right? Right? Most excellent. Yeah. And then um, the other correction is blood diamonds. Blood diamond. Do you know what a blood diamond is? I just figured it would be a diamond that was mined using you know, labor that's you know, not legit. So that's what I thought too. But it's not. A blood diamond is a diamond that's mined in a war zone and then used to finance an insurgency from the local people. Mm. Blood Diamond. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I think that movie with, uh, what's his face? Blood Diamond. Isn't it called Blood Diamond? Yeah. yeah. I don't know who's in it, but that's what a Blood Diamond Leonardo is. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. That was a good movie. I watched it a long time we, ago. We talked I, about I obviously th- forgot the premise because I didn't know the answer yeah. to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we uh, we had Hussein Skakey on last week, and he, grew, he was born in Sierra Leone. He's a Sierra Leonean. That's a good word. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even think I'd try to say it. Leonian. Yeah, I'm not going to try. No? Nope. I practiced all morning. <laughs> I swear to God I did. I was like, Leonian. Leonian in my office. Yeah. I didn't want to screw it up. I, it's screw upable. Try it. No way. Do it. No. Yes. No, it's going to be embarrassing. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm a Stevie-onian. <laughs> oh, my God. Dad joke number two. We're like 10 minutes into the show. Steve-o-leonian. Oh, you can't even say it right. I said it right. Yeah. No? steve lo steve Steve-onian. No, it's not what you said the first time. Is it? No. Uh, roll it back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the last thing I want to say is tomorrow, 
for all of our listeners out there. Tomorrow is the Duxbury High, Duxbury High School Girls and Boys Hockey Golf Tournament. And if you can't play, you can go to 32auctions.com backslash DHS hockey auction and you can bid on some incredible auction items. Awesome. I didn't write that down. I know you didn't. I'll give it to you when you leave. Uh, all right. Without further ado, Steve. Oh, well, but you know what? We got to talk about his nickname. Well, we'll get there. Steve DeWire from <laughs> Pembroke, Massachusetts, everybody. Wow. I got, I got, I got, I got, hang up. <laughs> I got one clapping in our senior hall. I don't even know. <laughs> Remember that? Guy? Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Unbelievable. Yeah. He made a, he had a good, what's he doing now? Oh, who knows? He was just in that movie though with Eddie Murphy, the remake of uh, uh, Coming to America. They did a remake of Coming it's to America? It's not a remake, it was like the next version. What's so it they're called? Old, they're older. I think it's Coming to America 2. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, amazing though mistaken. that, uh, nobody can think of an original idea. It's all remakes now. Yeah. Well, there's easy money in it, you know? Yeah. You already, you already got your client base. Yeah. Although the second Caddyshack was horrendous. Awful. But that's, you know, you can't, that's a classic that you can't. Yeah. yeah so, they, they caught lightning in a bottle. With they sure did. All right. So Steve-O, Steve DeWire, where'd you grow up, Steve? What, 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 give me the background. Where'd you grow up? <sighs> I thought you knew all this. So this is the beauty of the podcast. I do. Mm-hmm. But not everything. So there's going to be things that you tell me today that I'm going to go, you know, I've known him for 46 years and I didn't know that he did X. I uh, doubt it. <laughs> Pretty much an open <laughs> book. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. The last thing I want to tell you. So you know, the, you, know the, um, you know the symbol for Harvard? It's got the two books up top and it says V. Yeah, something in Latin. V. Tas. It means truth. So there's three books. If you look at the, lo- you look at the logo, the first two books are facing up. Because you can read, it's like whatever it is, truth and something, and the last one is life. And that book is facing down because the Puritans believed that the, 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 your path in life will never be revealed to you and that God has already created that path. So that book has been always facing down. And then later on, as Harvard started to realize that they, you know, a bunch of smart people, they flipped that book over as a symbol of you can learn at Harvard all the things you need to know in life. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, see, this is the problem what I was telling you about. The the New York guy was so much more interesting. <laughs> oh, I'm so pissed right now. You need a beanie. I just, all right, so who did you grow up in Pembroke with? Um, what do you mean, my family? Yeah, your family, uh, Steve-O. Nobody knows you out there. Pretend like I don't know you. I, I didn't even say I grew up in Pembroke. You just said that. I didn't. I didn't. I haven't revealed that yet. Oh, where did you grow up? Oh, he ruined the reveal. Where'd you go? Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Pembroke. Oh wow! Yes, yeah. Can wow. you believe it? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a nice little town in the South Shore. Who'd you grow up there with? Um, well, I got my my mom and dad, and I yeah. got a brother and a sister. I'm, and the, I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. I am the oldest. What's the age difference between everybody? So there's three between me and my brother, and then there's nine or ten. I think. Nine between is that much me and my sister, yeah, yeah. So that's close to me and Robbie. Then my brother, we're eleven. Yeah. So it was funny, like growing up, my sister. I didn't really know her, right? Because when I left to go to college, you know, she yeah. was she was really young, and one of her only memories of me, like before I moved off to college, and then I didn't. St- I lived at home maybe for like six months after yeah. college. So I was out of you the were house. gone city after college. I mean, after high school, I was I was not, never there. But her memory is I ordered Domino's, right? A meatball pizza, right? <laughs> Domino's. And I wouldn't give her a slice. <laughs> and she was so mad. And that is literally like her biggest memory of me before I left for yeah, college. Yeah, because you left for college at 17. She was seven or eight. Yeah. Yeah, she was little. Yeah, that's exactly how Robbie was. He left He left at 17 and I was six years old. So I don't, I do have memory of him picking me up and dropping me off places. Yeah. He, he didn't share dominoes with you? Uh, he if he did, I don't remember him not sharing it. Yeah. Yeah, I Remember was, Domino's though was like the only place that delivered. I was selfish with my Domino's, I guess. Meatballs from Domino's sounds yeah. disgusting. Well, it wasn't, well, it wasn't meatballs. It was, it was Hamburg. Oh, I think. Well, that Hamburg. makes it that makes it better. Yeah, they used to be good. The Hamburg now I tried is not good. And from Domino's? Yeah, they're still around. I love Domino's. Yeah. Really? So it doesn't Madden. My daughter. Do- I have a daughter, Madden. She loves Domino's. Her and I will get it all the time. Domino's. That's this week's sponsor. I like their <laughs> dipping sauces. Yeah. I like their sauce itself. It's like, um, like it has a little spice to it. Mm. And I like doughy pizza, and their pizza's really doughy. Yeah. yeah. So Domino's, for all your doughy pizza <laughs> needs. Domino's. Spicy. 
So, uh, do you go to public? Go to uh, Pembroke Public Schools? So I didn't. Well, I did till um, I did till what sixth grade, and then seventh and eighth, I went to Sacred Heart LMI, well, middle school or junior high um, in Weymouth, Weymouth Landing. Okay. I don't even think it exists anymore. I don't think it does either. Yeah. So why did you go I, there? I, well, put, I put that place out of business. <laughs> the, the wires well, came the, through the, there. The funny thing is, my college doesn't exist either. I put that place out of business. Every, everywhere I go, they just close up shop after. It's amazing. It's like, like, hey, he's, it, he's, he's gone through our yeah. system. We, we've done everything it now. can't get any better than that. <laughs> we've created the perfect person. Shut it down. <laughs> so uh, why why did you go to why did you go to Sacred Heart? So you know, oddly, I don't know if it's oddly, but my mother tells me that a teacher in like grade school came to her and said, if you let him go into the public school system after, after, you know, elementary school, you're going to lose him. (laughs) What does that mean? I I don't know. I I think, well, I mean, I was a tough kid. I think I had ADHD. I had all those things before they were like diagnosed, right? Because I would just, I would just lose interest in, in, in class and, you know, I'd get bored and I'd stick coins to my forehead and like I always had like my own section in, in every classroom you know I got pushed into the corner so I wouldn't distract students yeah the, the, the kids with ADHD back then were just the pains in the ass and that's what was me yeah that was me they were just yeah. the, the, go sit over there and shut up while everybody else tries to learn right essentially right, right. and so I, I guess one of the teachers just instilled in my mother that you know if he goes to public school he's not going to get the attention he needs so do your sister I know that uh, they all you all end up going to private high schools but does do they follow you to sacred heart um my brother my brother did um and then he actually and then i went to archbishop williams after that for high school and he went to bc high for a year yeah and uh he didn't make it <laughs> and he ended up going to, to Archie's after that so there's the first nudge that teacher that public school teacher that told your mother to get get well, you out of that, that class. wasn't my nudge that was my mother's nudge but that's a nudge it's a nudge for sure yeah absolutely yeah it puts you at sacred heart yeah, yeah. sets you on a, a path so yeah. now you get eighth grade. You playing any sports? What sports did you play growing up? Yeah, I played everything. You know, my parents put us in everything. So we, we didn't excel at pretty much any. I didn't excel at anything, <laughs> but I played everything. Yeah. Um, you know, soccer, hockey, baseball. Um, it, it just whittled down to just hockey at one point. Yeah. You know, I, I played in high school and then up in college I played. Um, I actually went up to dryland training to try out for the hockey team and like halfway through, I'm like, eh, this stinks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not like, I'm not even about to try I'm not out. doing this. I'm not gonna try out. But so when you're when you're coming out of the eighth grade, do you look anywhere else but Achi's? Um, I don't recall to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I think you know you know I took the test. You got to take the test to get into schools, and it could be the only one that said yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about that for a nudge? Uh, we'll take you. <laughs> Is that a good enough nudge? Yeah, you can get in here. Um, did you like it at Achi's? You know what I did. Um. I did. I, I did. You miss a lot when you don't go to your own hometown school as yeah. far as like I knew kids through Pembroke Youth Hockey and playing sports and stuff like that locally. But once you get into high school, then, you know, then now you're really hanging out with people. So one part that I did like about it is I had my Archie's friends, yeah. which were all like city kids. So yeah. one of my best friend freshman year was from Dorchester. And we can have I can tell you a funny story about that. As long as it's clean. It's clean. Um, <laughs> remind me to tell you the story, though. Remind. Yeah. yeah. Set a reminder. Yeah. Set a reminder. Got it. Um, so I had, she's those, actually setting a reminder yeah, right now. <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. I need to do that. Stuff. Um, I write things down in a book like that. Yeah. So I don't forget. Master plan. Um, but I had those kids that I, you know, you learned a lot, you know, city kids, like, yeah. you know, I was from Pembroke. So even Quincy was the city. Yeah. Right. And yeah, so I, I it, it was just the same a, way. just a different way of life up there. And it was, it was fun to hang out with them. And then I also got to hang around with my Pembroke friends. So I had like a couple groups of friends downfall of that is you don't have a crew yeah right i didn't have like a crew it was yeah. like separate crews and i kind of floated in and out and i kind of see the same in my daughter at this point too because she has different groups of friends but just not that one or two like solid yeah. friends, you know so but i think that that was that was something that was good it gave me relationships outside of the the local people that i knew yeah and your network just grows yeah one one more level right yeah. and just, we talked about that yesterday yeah we did we it, it just i just i i think it's so valuable to get out and go meet some other people from other towns and and make connections and then you go into you know you, go, you this kid knows somebody from bc high now you're at a bc high party then you're at an archie's party then you're at a pembroke party then yeah. somebody knows somebody in hanover you're at a hanover party um so i i thought there was a, a tremendous amount of value in that did did you play so you played hockey at Archies. I did. They were pretty good back then. Yeah, decent. Uh, two years after I graduated, I think they they actually won it all. When did so? When did you graduate? Eighty nine. Okay. Yeah. So it was like ninety two or something like that that they actually won. 
Yeah. I wonder if uh, Motto, was Motto there when you were there? Because Mike it, Motto's older brother was at Archie's. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Yeah. But I don't think, he wasn't in my grade. But yeah, he, was, he ended up going to play in, out in Chicago. So, so you go to, obviously, four years at Archie's. Yeah. You didn't have I to. I remember we practiced at the same facility as there. Yeah. Uh, and that's when Jeremy Roenick was going there. Yeah. And uh, we used to come in and just sit and, and watch their practice. And he was just a man amongst boys even back even then. Even back then. Well, Tony Monty was on the ice with them too. Yeah. I mean, that those that, those Thayer teams were were stacked. And we used to actually play. When I went to Thayer, we used to play Archie's. It was like the crosstown rival, yeah. right, or something like yeah. that. Because yeah. Archie's is technically in Braintree, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, so now you, you, you do your four years at Archie's and now you're getting ready to go to college and uh, did you have any teachers or anything at at, at Archie's that kind of guided you through? <laughs> no, not really. I I, don't, I think I might have calmed down a little bit in high school. Yeah, more than I was a you know I was kind of a pain in the ass and and uh, oh, can I say ass? Yeah, you can say ass. Yeah. We've decided you can say ass. All right, cool. You're an yeah. ass. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> uh, I actually googled it. You can. Okay. Oh, you googled it. Well, if it's, it's if it's on Google, then if, if yeah. it's on the Google machine, yeah, it's, it's legit. Hundred percent. Yeah. If it's on the internet, it's got to be. De- it's definitely be true. true. Yeah. For sure. Sure. But there, were there any? So I always, I always talk about how I didn't take full advantage of the opportunities that were in front of me, whether it was at Thayer or at Boston College. Do you feel like you didn't take advantage of Archie's other than the social aspect of it? I took advantage of the social side of it for sure. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I mean, honestly, I don't even think I, you know, I don't want to say anything bad about private schools or th- that one in particular. But I'm not quite sure I got even a better education than I would have got, you know, in in public school. Yeah. I think it was a, just a decent education, just like anything else. Um, but I think the social aspect was something that actually benefited, you know, yeah. kind of made me a little bit more, I don't know, say worldly because it's still just local, but right. You know Wor- what I mean? <laughs> worldly as far as going, <laughs> I was going to pray tree for school. Um, do you have buddies from Achi still? You know what? Uh, not as close as my Pembroke friends. Really? Um, yeah. You know, so I, I think, you know, actually, the my closest friends have always a lot of them have been cousins, right? And yourself and, oh. and our other cousin, our other cousin Steve, <laughs> our cousin Sleepy. I mean, I enjoyed. I actually look forward look, to coming home to family parties more than I did anywhere. Like I'd come home from college, and like like I could leave parties up there. Yeah, you know, coming home to our family parties, you know, we and, had good parties. Oh, it's great, great music was out. People were having fun. Yeah, you started playing the guitar, making fun of each other. I did. Yep. I started playing the guitar. When did you stop playing the guitar? You know, it's funny. Like, and I was where I was going with that is a lot of the friends that I have now yeah. are actually people I met just post college, um, and a lot of them actually have been work friends that I've carried on. with. Right. So more than high school. Or, yeah, yeah. 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 I think most of my friends now that I associate with are either from a company I worked at or I met you know through Sleepy. Yeah. Uh, our cousin Steve. Um, he, his nickname is Sleepy. He's looking at it because he's got like sleepy eyes. Yeah. Oh. I know. He's actually one of the reasons I'm called Steve-O as well. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, we're going to get, there's a nudge. Well, let's explain. Yeah. It's not a nudge. That's more of a segue. It's a nut. That is a nudge. How you got your nickname is a nudge in your life. A nudge is how you got your nickname. That's how the show got its name. <laughs> <laughs> we're all about nicknames here. Her nickname is Root, uh, Root Beer. Yeah, you I know heard that? you call her Root Beer. I don't understand A&W. Why. Her name is Amy Walsh. Oh. So I was going to call her Walshy, but every, you know. Yeah. Kind of like a stock yeah. nickname. Yeah, like Sully. Yeah, Oaky. Yeah. You know. Nudgy. No, that's not stock. <laughs> Nobody's a, no, no way. Steve-O is not. No. No, well, then there was that guy on Jackass that kind of stole my name. He bit. totally stole your name. Yeah. That was a, such a dumb show. Yeah, it was um, really dumb. So I her, love that show. <laughs> of course. You love Jackass. I do. Bunch of whiskey tangos. Yeah. White trash. Oh. You already forgot? You already forgot what a whiskey tango Wait, is? I actually saw Jackass in theaters. Yeah, it, they, it, it was allowed. It, it came back. It recently? Was like yeah. of, it was like one of the first movies that I went back to the theater for. Do you like movies? Are you a big movie person? I do. Yeah? I do. You like going to the movies? I like going to the movies. Probably more than I actually like movies. Yeah, do I you, agree. It, it's almost like you check out for two hours. Yeah. Like your life is on hold. Like everything else doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. The last movie I saw in a theater was uh, Mission Impossible. One. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Mission Impossible. When he when he hangs from the thing. I just saw. Uh, uh, yeah. What is it? Rise of Gru, the Minions. <gasps> yeah. I love the Minions. Just saw that with Madden the other day. Those are little uh, yellow people. Yeah, they're funny. Yeah, they're funny. So cute. Yeah, feel good. They're good. But I watch them at home. I, that's at home. That's an at home movie. 
That's so yeah, cool. but we wanted to get out. She was like, it. She was uh, this summer is between. She goes to camp at actually Thayer at mm. your high school, um, and then there's like a week between that and her starting school. So I kind of had to entertain her for a week. So that was one day we went to. We went this, to the movies. The Rise of Gru. Yeah. All and right. We, well, back to you now. Steve-o. So you go to college. I thought you wanted the Stevo story. Oh, we want to tell it now. We were going down that. All path, right. Let's we? go. How do we get there? I don't know. You, you, this road has many forks. It and, does. You know, we're, you just, gotta, we're, we're spidering all over the place. We're going to tr- the, take the road less traveled. Well, the thing is, our fans that are listening, you tease these our, things. Our yeah. fans? Yeah. Don't when, did, when did they become your fans? Well, I'm on this podcast right now, aren't I? Right now you are, okay. but, they're, but they're my fans that you're uh, getting exposed to. Okay. All right. You can't, they, Anyways, they can't be his fans. No, they been on no. the show for like thirty minutes. These, these, are, these are your microphones. This is your office. It is our fans. Well, is, what was that stupid movie? Is, is it, if you're here and I'm here, is uh, it our time, yeah. Mr. Hand? <laughs> Do you know that Fast Times at Richmond High? No. Oh my God. But Great. I actually was that for Halloween one year. You were Fast Times at Richmond yeah. High, but you, you don't. You were a movie. How did dressed you? up as the characters, With, but I had never seen it. Who were you? The seniors. Oh, oh the girls. Yeah. 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 The whistle. Yeah. That was pretty funny. All right, all right. <laughs> there you go. Never seen it. It's three of them. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It's three. Yeah. So anyways. Was that Matthew McConaughey? Yeah, it was. Yeah. That was his first movie role. We talked about him yesterday. We did. It's like some sort of inspirational speaker now. Yeah, I think he, he I mean, if you ever ask, yeah, if you ever ask somebody like who, if you could pick anybody, would you like to spend like a day with? Yeah. Mine would be Matthew McConaughey. Justin Timberlake. I just think, well, he'd, yeah, he'd be a good one too. <laughs> Justin Timberlake, hundred percent. That would that would <laughs> probably be my last guess for you. <laughs> my very last, second yeah. to last. I bet he'd be fun. Oh, I'd be a blast. Plays yeah. golf. Yeah, makes fun of himself. Yeah. I I turned the page with him when he did the the skit on Saturday Night Live in the box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you seen it? <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Yeah, that was pretty good. Oh, he, and he just made fun of himself. I was like this guy, and then he and then. There's another story out there that the local golf course that he grew up on was going under, and he went and bought it. Nice. Yeah, and fixed it up and saved it for the town that he grew up in. So, Justin Timberlake, if you're listening, JT, yeah. g- <laughs> give me a holla. Everybody needs a nudge. <laughs> He'd be a good guest. Oh, have you met I mean, Imagine if I scored Justin Timberlake. Hey, Justin, where'd you go to school? <laughs> I mean, not as good as me, but he'd be, no. he'd be a pretty good guest. I think our fans would love yes, it. Yes, our fans <laughs> would, would enjoy Justin Timberlake. All right, so the Steve-O story. Gotcha. Oh, you want me to tell it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Sleepy, we call him Sleepy because he's got sleepy eyes, is our cousin, so our mothers are sisters. Um, and then my father <clears throat> is Steve Sr. So there was three Steves in our family. Yep. And so it get confusing, you know, at parties and whatever, who you're talking about. So my father is Uncle Steve, yep. or Big Steve, if, if, it's not your, if he's not your uncle. And then Sleepy became Sleepy because Steve just couldn't be used, right? And so he became Sleepy. And then I got an O at the end of mine. So Steve-O. Steve-O. Sleepy yeah. actually, for outs- people who didn't want to call him Sleepy, um, would call him Steven. It would be his full name. So it would be Uncle Steve or Big Steve, Steven or Sleepy, and Steve-O. Yeah, we all called him Sleepy. I think his mom probably called him Steven. <laughs> for maybe. Right. Maybe. I think, I, think, I think the aunts, like my mother called him Steven. She'd never call him Sleepy. My dad yeah. calls him Sleepy, though. Yeah, I think my mother calls him Steven, too. Yeah. Everybody else calls him Sleepy, though. Yeah. It's a great nickname. It really is. Sleepy? For who? For him. For him. Root beer. He, he also, I think, I think that wasn't, it, didn't he have a tendency to fall asleep while he's driving, too? Is that, oh, is that did I just make that up in my opinion? I think he just made that up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh-huh. Well, I like your nickname. What, Mine? What, yeah. No, yours is pretty cool, too. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> yours is good, too, Root Beer. I don't Thank know. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, college. Yeah. Do you go? Yeah. No, I went. Yeah. yeah. How was it? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. I wouldn't change anything of the six years that I went. <laughs> I, I'm kidding. I, oh. I only took four. Oh, that's good. Good yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, more people have taken more years now. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I originally wanted to go. So I went to North Adams State College, which yeah. is up in North Adams, Mass. It doesn't exist anymore. They, it's something else. Now it's called the, I'm going to use my Boston accent here, Mass College of Liberal Arts. Mass College of Liberal Arts. Yeah. Beautiful school. Yeah. It, it's nice up there. It's it's beautiful area. Um, except in the winter, it's pretty much just snow and gross. There's like one hill that you can sled down. Yeah. yeah. How do you know this? I looked at it. Oh, did you go to Westfield? Westfield. Yeah. I like Westfield State. Me too. Yeah. Owls. I, I is that what you guys are? Owls? Yeah. Hoo, hoo. <laughs> oh, is that where you got your uh, hoo, <laughs> hoo, hoo? Maybe. Yeah. Mm. Maybe. 
<laughs> so anyways, what was the mascot for North Adams State? Mohawks. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. Your father actually got me a job up there because they own um, Wingate Management, the company he works for, owned a low-income and elderly housing complex up there. Yeah. Oh, in Adams, next town over. Yeah. So, so the original nudge gave you a nudge. He did. He did. He gave me a See what I did there? Gave me a job up there. That's good. Yeah, it was fun. It was, I mean, it stunk because at the end of the school day when everybody else was kind of like preparing to like either take naps or, you know, start to drink or whatever, have fun, I'd have to get in my car and drive and go to work for yeah. three or four hours. So you worked for three or four hours, then you came back and caught up to everybody. What yeah. They were doing. Yeah. Yeah. But everyone's pretty much done by then. Yeah. You know? Well, what time? This was the weekend. I only worked during the week, so yeah, on the weekends. So what we, what time were you working? Three to seven, so three to eight. They four? would they would leave. Um, I was maintenance, so they would leave. You know, instructions on what I needed to do. Got it. Um, which was excellent because I'd bang them out in like an hour. Right. I just like hang around. There's a pool table in the back where the maintenance people were, or I'd just find an empty apartment and sleep for a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> but I got all my work done first, right? And so I, I made sure I got all my work done. One one time, you I better make sure my father. You better not be listening. Oh yeah, no, no. They, I mean, I bet they had high things to say about me because I'd bang that work out. <laughs> right, you know? it, it would be cool. I'd hang around with some of the elderly people, like wicked cool, and they would they'd like take, with this one lady. Whenever I was vacuuming her floor, she'd leave her door open, and it usually was around time uh, Jeopardy was on. Yeah, and so she'd have me come in, and I'd sit down on the couch and. We'd do Jeopardy uh, with oh, her for like, nice. for like a little bit, and Aww. then I'd go back out and, and continue my vacuuming. That's so sweet. Yeah, See, that's something lo- I didn't know. She loved it, yeah. You were her nudge. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she'd she open the door, and I'd get by, and she'd be like, hi, come on in. <laughs> and you went in. Went in, watched Jeopardy for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Then you said, so I got to go back to work? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, See, I, I didn't know I, I got to bang this stuff out because I need to take a nap. Right. <laughs> 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 um, what do you study up there? Um, I was, I was actually going down the path that you actually went down. I was studying, uh, interdisciplinary studies, um, which was a precursor to law school. Yeah. Um, and I kind of got into that and I couldn't keep my GPA. You had to keep your GPA at a certain <clears throat> level to keep that major. And I, I fell under that. Yeah. Yeah. So I was pretty lazy my freshman and sophomore year. And then you realize you got to pick it up. And then I realized I had to pick it up. I ended up graduating with, uh, I think it was. Why, like, what, like what a, happened like that made you realize three point, three you got to point something. It, it, it's like a, it's like a. C plus B. It was it was a D zero from freshman year. So really? Yeah, yeah. It was almost. I was on academic probation. They were like the whole shoot yeah. match. Yeah, like if you don't uh, if you don't get it up, you're out. So that's what that was the nudge. But yeah, I mean it was pretty solid. Yeah, nudge, right? yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna be out. Yeah, it's more of like a punch in the face yeah. than a nudge. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a good push. Yeah. So you get your act together. Yeah. I Change did. your major. I did. I changed it, in, in which is good because it's more along the lines of what I do now. Um, I changed it to um, to English communications. Okay. So more writing, marketing, communications, that kind of stuff. All right. Yeah. So English communications to me sounds like a fake major. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Yeah. <laughs> sounds fake. It was real. Was it? Yeah. What did you study? It's on my diploma. I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious, but like, yeah. what did you study? Facetious. That's a good word. Big word. Yeah. Yeah. English major. I was not an English major. I was yeah. a sociology major, which is also a joke major. Right. Yeah, that sounds like it's made up. Uh, yeah. like, what would you major in? Ethics. Yeah. What would you do? Cheat. Yeah. <laughs> the whole way through. Funny thing is- I we, majored in figuring out a way to take the easiest classes. That's what I majored in. They're the most <laughs> interesting. Sociology? Yeah. Yeah. Study of people. Nature versus nurture. Yeah. All oh. that stuff. What do you believe, nature or nurture? A little bit of both. So, neither. A little bit of both. <laughs> But you got to pick one. It's nature versus nurture. It's not nature and nurture. I think it's a mix. I do too. I'm with you. I just was trying to give you a hot question. Me? Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> um, I, I'm only on the same lines. It's almost like my political views. It's like I. Jesus. I, oh know. my God. How did you go from <laughs> nature versus nurture well, to your political views? Well, because I believe you're a moderate. You're in the middle. I believe both sides have have legitimacy, right? Yeah. So I, both sides have a point, and I I think you know that's where I fall. So, so we don't talk about uh, politics. Yeah, no, I don't. I hate politics. I should have given him the warning. No, I don't want to talk about it. You know, it's funny. The one thing that COVID brought up in my house is all of a sudden we started talking about politics. Not, I'm not. M- m- I'm talking about like uh, my brothers and sisters and my parents. Right. All of a sudden, politics were like on the table, and it had ne- never ever talked politics. No, no, I know. It's you're not alone. And it wasn't. The whole it country. wasn't good. No, no, it's divided a lot of people. Yeah. It's because that was the highlight during that time. Yeah, it was the only thing to talk about. Well, it was polarizing, too. Like, before, you know, in, in politics, our presidents were 
politicians and you know kind of told the line and yeah. it was very similar whether it was a republican or a democrat you kind of knew what you were going to get yeah and then you know obviously mr trump comes in and that's a whole new shooting match right yeah. it just made it made it so it just it, it cut and dry like yeah you're either, you're either on my side or you're not yeah right? yeah that, anyway that's what that's what happened yeah i thought we didn't talk about politics. we don't we're okay. not going to talk about politics. Right. Right. So, you want to talk, want, talk about um want to, we were talking about Majors and courses in college. Yes. You want to hear the irony of one of the courses that I took, trying to just you know get my grade point up, so I'm taking some easy stuff to yeah. make sure I can get it up. Um, I took ethics, and everybody cheated <laughs> at ethics. So <clears throat> it used to be those blue books, you know, those little blue books. Yeah, and, the, the, and, and the exam books. The exam books. So yeah. you you'd, you know they'd be questions, and you wrote your answer in a very in an essay form. Yeah. Someone would get the questions prior to the exam. You'd get a blue book you'd write up all your answers to the questions you'd shove it under your you know shirt and you kind of sit there and just doodle in the book for a while and then when you think you're ready you kind of take that one out and put the put the one that you wrote up and walk away amazing yeah and i think the teacher obviously knew it all because everyone had the same answers right <laughs> i we took a class in at bc and um it was like a it was like a, one of those classes it was taught by a by a priest i forget what it was called catholicism or some it was a nonsense class and two of my buddies turned in the exact same paper mm -hmm. and he wrote C John's paper for notes, like B minus C John's <laughs> paper for notes. Like I he didn't want to write it again. He care. He's like, yeah. I'm not writing this twice. Yeah. So I'm going to write it on one of them. And yeah, you're you both going to get B minuses. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I'm sure the ethics teacher knew, right? He knew like, yeah. all the answers were similar. Like, yeah. You know, so. Well, or he thought he did an incredible job of teaching and everybody was super smart and got all the material, right? Actually, it's the flip side, right? He's teaching ethics. So obviously he didn't have much of an impact on us <laughs> for cheating at ethics. He's the worst ethics teacher in the history <laughs> ever, of the world. Ever. No, uh, no wonder that place he, is closed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get out of college, and what do you, where do you go? So it was hard. Um, when I graduated college, it was ninety three, and it was like the economy was tanked. Kind of it, you know, not not. Yeah, not too dissimilar than to today. Like if you were graduating today, it's yeah, like, it's like you know the job. Yeah, it was environment it was, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, there's more. I guess there's more jobs now because people don't want to work now. Right. But quiet I, quitting. Yeah. You heard about this quiet yeah, quitting? I read about that yesterday. What is it? I didn't. So I about it, it's basically you. You decide at one point, and I think I did this at my old job. To be honest with you. <laughs> um, you just decide that you're that, so ethical. Yeah. Cheating, quitting, whatever. <laughs> Well, the dark side of Steve-O. <laughs> Hold on, folks. <laughs> I think our fans are loving this. They are. They love it. Yes. You can tell. Yes. Tens and tens of them. Tens and tens. Um, what were we talking about? How you are an unethical person and no, quit no, your job. No, no, no. That's, that's another point. Oh, yes. The quiet quitting. So I think quiet quitting, I believe, um, is when you just decide whatever job you're in, it's just... It's not for you. It's not worth it. But you don't want to quit because you're maybe making a decent amount of money. You got benefits. Right. So basically, you just kind of start mailing it in. And so you just kind of barely just do it the bare minimum. So you're not, you know, going over and above. You're not really putting all your effort into it. You're just kind of going through the daily routine. So I feel like that's that's how every job ends. Yeah. I feel like that's been going on forever. Now yeah. they put a name on it. And I, it's I, I and think you can be quiet fired as well. Um, you know, yeah. If someone doesn't want to, like, just, you know, go out and fire you, they... They don't give you raises or right. you don't get annual reviews because right. they just don't care. Right. And there's hope you just quit someday. Right. right? right. So I think you can be quietly fired. Quiet and fired now, I think. Wow. It's deep. That's deep. All right. So the job market's hard, blah, blah, blah. So what yeah, do you get, what yeah. Do you do? Yeah. So, you know, and it's funny, you know, back then, the, the <laughs> boo hoo. Um, the uh, you know you didn't have the internet so you got newspaper right yeah. you know, with the classifieds and you know, I'd, I'd circle things that I was interested in and I'd call this is a funny story actually so so if you can't say it's a funny story it puts too much pressure on you for the story to be funny the story's stupidly not funny just tell the story it's completely not funny this now it's I mean now the pressure is I, I mean I'm amazing no I think you're gonna laugh at this I think it's funny <laughs> I probably should hope so yeah, now yeah I think I think it's gonna be funny okay all right. Here it goes. Here we go. So one of my first interviews, like I read in the in the classifieds, there's really not much there. It yeah. just says like sales position, whatever. It doesn't tell Here's you. Here's the phone number. Yeah, that's it. So I call it and uh, they're like, okay, we're going to be in your area this time, this time. And we're going to be at the Holiday Inn, you know, in, in you know, Woburn. So I'm like, all right. So I get a time. I go to the Holiday Inn in Woburn. I'm like, I'm here for an interview. And the lady says, oh, he's in the, he's in the whatever, the top room, you know, because it had a, had a, like an office. So I go up there. 
you know, I have no idea what I'm interviewing for. Like, no idea what the company is, no idea what it is, right? And so he starts asking me, you know, interview type questions. You're like, what are you looking for? What do you want to do? Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what wouldn't you want to do? And I'm like, you know what? One thing I would not want to do is ever work for like an insurance company or in the insurance industry. I just, I don't, I don't think I'd do that. And so we go on, we go on. And so he's like, okay, so let me tell you about the position. The position is at my company and we're an insurance company. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, the, with the fun, I told you to laugh, right? Yeah, that's good and, story. And, and the, the funnier thing of it is, at the end of the interview, he's like, "He's like, we'd like to hire you." I'm like, "Really? Are you kidding me? I just told you I don't want to work in your right. industry, and I hate the insurance industry, and I don't want to work in it." And I took the job. You did? I did. I had no job. I, I had to take it. So, it, talk about quiet quitting. So, <laughs> the job itself was. I don't even have to ask questions. Are you Are you yeah. noticing this? Yeah. Just <laughs> sit over here and go. No, real. Oh my god. No way. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so anyways, I, I take the job. The job essentially is they sell this, it's, it's, um, not Geico of yesterday, but Aflac, you know what yeah. Aflac is, right? Yeah. It's supplemental insurance, right? If you get Bridge, hurt or yeah. whatever, right? It's not, it's, yeah. yeah. And so that's what it was before Aflac existed, I think. And so I would go and the, the job was to drive around and find construction sites, like people building houses or whatever, and stop in there, ask for the foreman and say, Hey, listen, I have you know, health insurance, not health insurance, I have liability insurance or whatever it is. And I'd like to talk to your guys about it to see if anybody's interested. It was like $50 a policy. Yeah. And so he, the guy would say yes. And then I'd talk to everybody and, you know, you'd sign people up, you know, and I'd make commission off each one of those. Yeah. It's just not me. Right. I right. was like, this is, this is the word. So what I would do is the second part of the job is renewals. So I'd have a stack of renewals that were needed to be done for the day. And that's basically just going to people's houses and saying, hey, you've bought this policy. You've renewed it the last five years. You're up for renewal. It's going to be $50. Do you want to renew? And uh, I would just do that. Yeah. I'd just do all my renewals. You wouldn't do any I, new I, business. I just, I, it was too sleazy for me. I didn't yeah. want to be in that industry. And, yeah. and like I had to take it just because I needed a job. So that was your, that was your quiet quitting. Yeah. You didn't yeah. do I just mailed it in. I just, yeah. yeah, I just did the, I just did the renewals. So how does it end? Is the guy like, hey man, you got to go. No, no, they they kept me on. They, I mean, they were hurting for people. Like, who wants to do that job, right? Yeah. So they had me. They, at least I was doing renewals for them. Right, 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 right. So right, that, right. You, you know, were they knocking were, that out. Yeah, they were happy with that, right? Not happy, but they were they were okay with it. But um, then I, you know, I left there and I took a job at Enterprise Rent a Car. Um, and the reason being is, I just, I just thought it'd be good experience. Um, you know, how to deal with people. Um, and enterprise at the time, and I don't know how, if they're still built this way, they're managed, the stores are managed just by employees, right? Yeah. It's not like they hire managers, like they, they hire from within. So you start it at, at the, at the job and then you work your way to manager. And so it's kind of like you're running your own little business. Yeah. And so I, I took that job just for a couple of years and I had a blast. I had a blast. It's still, I have still a couple friends. Crazy Scott. Oh, Crazy Scott was crazy. Yeah. Crazy Scott. I met through. He's not still with Enterprise, Enterprise, is he? No, no. He's bunched around. <laughs> believe it or yeah, not. Yeah, I believe it. He's he's actually in uh, a medical industry now. He was his father was a pharmaceutical salesperson. Yeah. So he got a job there, and I, I can't tell. I don't want to talk out of school, but he lost that job um, <laughs> for an incident. Yeah. Um, but he uh, he he's, he sells medical devices or something oh, now. Good business to be in. Yeah, yeah. He makes decent money. But. So when in this in your journey do you stop playing the guitar? So, the, so I met, guitar, I met awesome guitar player. I don't wouldn't say awesome. He's just, all, for my ears, he, is. he plays yeah. all the songs I like. Right. Like I don't know like 10. So you know more than 10 songs. Yeah, maybe. Um, during the pandemic I did, uh, I did Steve-O's. Yeah, it was uh, awesome. Pajama jams. Yeah. Jammy jams. Yeah. Oh, so I'd sit, I love that. I'd sit, I'd, Jammy I'd, jams. Yeah. I'd sit in my pajamas <laughs> and I'd record me playing a song and then I'd, I'd put it out on my, uh, my Facebook channel. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Yeah. I did one every night. I did it for a really long time. I'm like, I can't believe I know all these songs. Yeah, it was good. I but, learned one song during the pandemic. Yeah, on Which the one? guitar. On the guitar. Stay away to heaven. Isn't no. that like the one that everybody knows? Coldplay, fix you. Oh, Lovely I love enough. that song. Me too. Yeah, big my mom, fan. Big my mom fan. loved Coldplay. Yeah, my mother loved Coldplay too. Yeah, yeah. loves Coldplay. Yeah, yeah. My, my mother passed away. So my mother she, she loved. She loved. Yeah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> that was sad. Anyways, that just turned sad. Didn't yeah. It? <laughs> So listen, <clears throat> this is a good segue. Right? Let's let's keep going. Yeah. Um, so oh, he's all into it now. <laughs> From the guy that didn't think he'd have anything to well, say. I, I'm just trying to get to the time where we end. That's all. Yeah. Well, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Jammy jam. <laughs> so <clears throat> so when I learned the guitar, so my next job after Enterprise, I actually delivered a car to this guy um, at this really nice place in Norwell. This this business, and I'm like, wow, this office is awesome. It was like all 
you know, mahogany and sailboats and like, wow. I'm like, they must do something cool here. Like, yeah. And so I asked the guy, actually, he you know, was delivering a car for him because his car was in the shop and Enterprise did that at the time. And I'm like, what do you guys do here? He's like, we're, we're technical recruiters. So we, we recruit at the time. They were recruiting software developers and programmers and that kind of stuff. I said, really? I go, you know, do you have any jobs here? <laughs> and he's like, well, we're actually building a recruiting department. Um, so, you know, I can put you in touch with that guy. So he did put me in touch with the recruiter guy. And I interviewed and he, the guy was like, do you have any recruiting experience? I'm like, nope. <laughs> he goes, How about that for a nudge, though? <laughs> I drop off the guy's Mazda, and I'm going to pick myself up a job real quick. I did. I, as soon as I walked in that building. Talk about the hustle, right? I yeah. love that. You knew you wanted to work there. So hustle, make a note, hustle. I want to I go back to hustle. Because <laughs> that hustle is <laughs> hustle, hustle, <laughs> hustle's incredible. My, hustle's my nudge. Um, so anyways, I ended up you know, taking the day. I got the job. He hired me anyways. <clears throat> He's like, I, you know, I go, I bet I can do this job. I know I can do this job. And I actually was really good at it, and I did it for a really long time. During that time, I met Timmy Peacock, yeah, um, which is a guy. handle guy. And uh, I kind of knew him anyways, um, and this, he randomly just interviewed there and got a job. And I'm like, holy crap, Timmy. Um, My wife calls him tube socks. Because he used to wear like high tube socks with shorts. Yeah, <laughs> He literally was like, well, oh, here comes tube socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. That's, I forgot about that. Tube socks. Yeah. But anyways, we'd go He's to parties. A He's a good guy. He played guitar. He played guitar. So we'd go to parties, and I didn't know how to play guitar. And we would just end up in a corner. He'd be playing guitar, and I'd just belt out songs. Like, I, I didn't sing at the time, but I just would belt out songs. And then finally, he's just like, we should do this. He's like, we should, we should do it. We should do it. We should play out. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm good enough for that. And then we tried it. So our friends lived in South Boston at the time and knew a person who owned um, Murphy's Law. Yeah. Which is like a, a crap hole bar. But Love Murphy's Law. Yeah. <laughs> really? A di- that's a dive that's a bar. Dive, right? That's a dive. So she owned it and they lived in actually the house that her and her husband owned. He actually got deported back to Ireland. Oh. Um, yeah. He was, Jeez, he that's was, a sad story he was, again. He was, was kind of crooked. Oh, that's a great story. Yeah. Good job by the government. <laughs> So, so we played out at Murphy's Law and, uh, you know, I'd started writing songs and I tried to tell Timmy how to play them and he just, I don't know, I just never got it. So I'm like, you know what? F it. You know, just like the effing list. I'm like, F it. I'm just going to teach myself guitar. So we used to go to those gigs at Murphy's Law. Yeah. All yeah. the time. Like I, I wouldn't miss one. It was like, it was like going to see you too. I was like, Steve O's playing. I'll be there. Yeah. We only did them like once a quarter. So it was like kind of a treat. Yeah. You know, it was it wasn't awesome. like we did it every week. And, we just and the, did it once a quarter. And the whole bar was full of all Us, of our friends right. and yeah. he's in the corner playing with, with uh, yeah. tube socks. It tube was great. Socks. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. So that's why, that's why I picked up the guitar because I was trying to figure out how to tell someone how to play my songs and he, he couldn't. Out of necessity, essentially, he yeah. started playing. Yeah. Yeah. How old were you then? Well, I'd say probably mid to late 20s. Yeah, so that's got to be what? I mean, if I was in, Marlene was around, so early 2000s, mid 2000s? So I first learned it in probably late 90s, <clears throat> so probably 97-ish, 98. Yeah. And then I got good enough to play like cover tunes by the time you're talking about yeah. early 2000s. And it was like Third Eye Blind. Yeah. Ooh. Um, Pearl Jam. Yeah. I just saw Third Eye Blind. All, all the 90s bands. Verve. Was it Verve? Yeah, the yeah. Verve. Yeah. yeah. Bittersweet Symphony. Yeah. Great songs. Lucky Man. Yeah. Um, I liked uh, Third Eye Blind, though. Yeah. What's the ledge song? Wish you would step back from that ledge. Yeah. Jumper. Friend. Jumper. Yeah. Oh, see, I don't know the names, but that's why you're here. <laughs> it's a good song. Yeah. Semi Charmed Life was the big one, though. Yeah. Yeah. And then you could play U2. <clears throat> yep. Oasis. Yeah. Oasis. Oh. Wonder yeah. Wall. Of course. That was like uh, the go to band. Yeah. Remember right? they did that mall tour? No. Yeah. I saw them at the mall. What the mall? mall Square One Mall, Saga. Oh, no way. Yeah. Wow. Oasis. I didn't even know where the Square One Mall was. I went to a Patriots game, and I must have dropped my credit card. This is like early, early. And uh, and I got a call from the credit card company saying there's been a large amount of purchases on your credit card. I'm like, hmm, wow. Where is it? And they're like, Square One Mall. I'm like, I don't even know where the Square One Mall is. <laughs> yeah. Right? And so uh, they, they obviously credited me and canceled the card. So someone who lived in the North Shore found my credit card and charged a bunch of stuff at the Square One at Mall. At the Square One Mall. Cinnabon. Yeah. What, what? <laughs> Cinnabon, she I don't, says. I don't, I don't know if I can say this, but I'm going to say it anyways, and you can edit it. If you, so the Square One Mall, so my wife is from Revere, so I've now spent a lot of time on the North Shore and gone by the Square One Mall quite a bit on Route 1. And they had, um, <laughs> they had a gym in there, and it was called Pumps, Pumps Gym. And they also have a Dick's 
sporting goods, <laughs> right? And so on the sign, and they've since changed it, so someone else must have figured this out. It said pumps. <laughs> But it didn't get any better, and I think it's still I think it's still this way. Listen, it didn't get any better because there's an old navy in there, and now it says old navy. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. It does. I think it does. Hey, next time you go by, it. I can't wait to drive. I almost want to drive there now and look at it. It said pumps, and now it says old navy. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Every time I drove by, I'm like, I can't believe no one said anything. Like, that, that is just ridiculous. terrible, ridiculous. Yeah. Um. So, uh, speaking of your wife. Yes. It's a very big nudge. Yes. That I gave you. Right, right. I don't know if I should thank you or... <laughs> well, <laughs> I think more thankful yes, than anything yes. else. She's amazing. <clears throat> She's amazing. She's one of the reasons I'm able to do what I do now today, which is run my own business. Because without her, you know, help, there's no way I would be able so to So I was a big it. nudge in her life, too. What do you mean? Well, I'll tell the story. So, well, I... Cause, so cause, Steve... Because I'm the best decision she ever made? Well, yeah, but Steve-O, <laughs> Emily, Steve-O's Emily and Marlene lived together in law school. So I was dating Marlene and Steve-O and I were hanging out all the time and so the connection was made and they ended up getting married. Aww. I yeah. know. The first night, I, we just told this story the other day, the first night that we, I was going to meet you know, them, um, I, it was, they were going out with a big group of girls and I said, Dan, you know, who's, the, who's the prettiest one? Like, and he said, oh, probably Marlene's roommate. I'm like, all right. And as soon as we got there, I'm like, which one's Marlene's roommate? He's like, that one. I'm like, pew. Yeah. Right over there. Now they're married. Yeah. Talked her ear off. So, but then, f- like five years ago, you rented that house in Duxbury. Correct. And we're sitting down by the by fire pit. Yep. And Solo Emily- Stove. We get, get another sponsor. Oh, Solo Stove. Solo Stove. Yeah. Solo Stove. Which is a great company, by the way. So, sorry to distract you, but I have a Solo Stove. I bought one in like 2015 when they first came out. So, it's really old. And it's been used a lot. So my buddy saw it and saw that the bottom was kind of caved in just from being hot and all the logs being thrown out. He's like, you take pictures and send it to them. They'll send you a new one. I'm like, really? I'm like, yeah. All right. So I took pictures and I got a new one coming in the mail. It's coming tomorrow. You're kidding me. Yep. Brand new one. No questions asked. So they'll stop. Do- Remember L.L. Bean used to do that with their yeah, boots. Yeah. They don't do it anymore. No. I think at some point they're like, we're losing money here. Yeah. Part of our business model is so that that guy buys another one. Yeah. I think Patagonia does that as well. If you like rip a Patagonia shirt. I don't money. think they do it anymore no. though. No. Well, that I, guy just. Gave his whole company up to the world. Yeah. Very generous. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be pissed if I was his kid. They called him a, a reluctant <laughs> reluctant billionaire. I'm like, who's reluctant reluctantly a billionaire? billionaire right? Stop yeah, it. Ridiculous, right? So anyways, where, where were we at? I distracted you. So oh, we were at that one on the beach. Sitting on the by beach. the fire. Yeah. Not in one of those, what, what was it called? Solo stove? Solo stoves. For all your solo stoving needs. Yes. Solo stove. Our fans love solo stoves. They do. Yeah. They do. Um... And she wasn't. She was all worked up because she was about to take over this law practice. So it, the funny thing is, and the best thing you said, it was it was amazing. It was, I was like, thank you, Dan, for saying this because it's usually me saying her stuff. And like, she's like, just tell me to shut up. But he, she was explaining what the, what was happening. So the firm that she was working for, the guy's ego got a little bit big, and he just was absent for like the last three or four years of of the firm being in business. And her and her her other partners, not partners, other lawyers in there, kind of created relationships with these people uh, over and above what he had originally created. They didn't really know him. A lot of his people had left the companies that they they supported. And so she was nervous about keeping clients, and he was shutting up the firm. He just said, one day I'm closing the firm. You guys want to buy it from us? And her and the other lawyers were like, you know what you pay us. We can't afford to buy anything from you. Right. And so he's like, well, we're shutting the firm down, and I'm giving you, I'm giving you a, a month. And that was it, right? And so they didn't know what they were going to do. They're like, oh, we'll start our own firm. And then he's like, tried to sell it. And his ego was so big, he thought he'd sell it. No one wanted to buy it. So then he was like, okay, um, I'll give you guys the firm if you keep me on as a consultant. Pay me a consultancy fee. And they were like, no, no we don't, we don't want to do that. Yeah. We, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go start our own thing. And he's like, okay, well, all right. I'll give you the firm if you just, you know, every once in a while, you know, need me, call me in for something. They're like, no, no, we don't want to do that, right? And so... And so eventually he's like, okay, I'll give you the firm and can you buy the office furniture from me? And they're like, no, we don't want your furniture. <laughs> oh my God. <clears throat> so, so, I mean, he did it to himself, and, sure. but she was really nervous at that point with that. It was towards the end of the summer and yeah. the firm was closing like at the end of the summer. So like September it was closing. She was just like, well, all these clients come with me. Will they come with us? And, uh, 
And so she was explaining to Dan. So yeah, he just kind of faded away. He gave us, you know, access to all these clients and now we just got to make sure they stay with us. And if they do, they, she just starts a business with a book of business already. And Dan was like, so what's the problem? Yeah. Literally, <laughs> so I was like, I don't, like, I'm not, I don't get it. I don't, what, what, what's your deal? Well, yeah. But she was just stressed out about them coming. Yeah, over, it's hard. You know? Starting a new business is right, hard. Right. But, but I was the nudge. The nudge was the nudge. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think. And I was the nudge that introduced you to Emily. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Can't deny that nudge. No, no. That's a legit nudge. Yeah, that's a legit nudge. Yeah. So what? So what's going on now in life? So you know, as I alluded to, I started my own business uh, probably three three years ago. I think it was eight, right before the pandemic, um, which was not ideal. Uh, but we've made it through. And what's so, the name of the company? So it's Intersecting Knowledge. Intersecting yeah, Knowledge. This is actually IK Intersecting Knowledge. Oh, nice! Yeah, look made, at that. I made this shirt up. Yeah. Oh. It's not even my real logo, but I just thought this would look cool on a, a T-shirt. So I, I got it. So I see the LLC. So I'm so picking I, it up so now. I, so I did. You're picking up what I'm putting yeah. down. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, started that intersecting knowledge, basically the name, it's kind of our philosophy. So in what we do is we do marketing, branding, uh, websites, that kind of stuff. And when we support clients, it's a lot of stuff that they don't know. Right. And so, but they know their company and they know their brand and they know who they want to be and they know who they're targeting. They need us to then translate that into websites and marketing materials and how you, you know, elevator pitches and all that podcasts, kind of podcasts. And so what our philosophy is, is where their knowledge of who they are, what they are, who they want to be, and our knowledge of how to translate that into these things, where that intersects is where the best solutions are, are, are found. Intersecting knowledge. Intersecting how about knowledge. that little elevator pitch you just Love threw that. at us? That was right? solid. Yeah. Perfect. Not, not the first time you've done that. No, I've told that story quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, it, it's also a cool name because it, it truncates really cool. So it truncates our websites, interno.com. Yeah. So interno. So yeah. what... Um, what was the nudge that made you uh, sort of go out on your own? The nudge was my company that I was working for was struggling, and I was literally the highest paid person at the at the company at the time, other than partners, and they weren't making any more partners. Yeah. And so every time they talked about budget cuts, I was on the table. Um, yeah. And it finally just came to a head, and they're like, their egos were pretty big, um, and you know, trying to deal with them was was tough. But it, they felt they didn't need a salesperson, a business development person, which I was. They felt their creative was good enough to sell itself. So yeah. I was almost forced down their throats to begin with. But I stayed there eight years, nine years. So I you know, obviously was doing a good job because I was there nine years. But um, eventually, you know, it just they needed to trim, and they basically came to me and said, "Steve, we you know we gotta we gotta lay you off basically." Yeah. And I said, "Well, listen, that that." It's a bummer, right? But, um, you know, I, I think I've only had, I think, four real jobs or five real jobs in my entire life. And I'm yeah. 51. And I think every decade is when I change over. It was, yeah. it was weird, right? Yeah. I'm and a so, seven-year guy. Yeah, every seven years. So, like, my 20s was with one company. My 30s was with another company. Yeah. My 40s was with them. And now my 50s is my own company. Yeah. So that was the nudge. But, yeah. Was, you were also, if I remember correctly, there was a whole bunch. You, you were noticing or seeing shouldn't say no. You, you were seeing business opportunities that were too small for them and you felt like there was a, there was a, a place for those to, th to go. Yeah. So, so, um, their overhead just basically required a, a sizable budget, right? Yeah. So if someone came to us with a website project, they needed a hundred thousand dollars or more to, to, for us to do the website, yeah. for that company to do the website. And there was a lot of people that didn't have that. And so I was the front door to that and I'd see a lot of these opportunities come in and good clients, like people I'd like to do work for and like deserve great creative and deserve a great website, but just couldn't afford us. So at the time I asked, I asked the partners, I'm like, what should I do with these? You know, I, I want to take care of these. Like, well, oh, give them to someone who used to work here. You yeah. know, it was a, you know, it was an amicable split, right? And I get a lot of leads from them still. And I, I, I definitely respect their creativity and, and their ability to, to do what they do. So it was good. And, and everyone who left that company was kind of the same way. So like, give it to somebody who used to work here. Yeah. And what would happen was, you know, I'd give it to them and I wouldn't know what would happen to it. Right. Yeah. You weren't, yeah, there's no way to keep it. You don't know if they're it. following up and, and right. I got a couple phone calls like, Hey Steve, you know, X, Y, Z didn't call me back. You told me they were going yeah, to reach out to me. And you put your name out now there. Now my brand is yeah. on it. Right. Yeah. And now it's making me look bad. So my current partner who I had worked with at a previous agency and this company. So I've known her for 22 years. Um, she was she left the company to to be a stay at home mom for her third kid. It was just too hard to work and have three little kids, and so she was just doing freelancing. And she's like a project manager, boots on the ground, back end person, a lot of stuff that I don't know how to do. And I said to her, I'm like, listen, if I set these up right and refer them over to you, 
will you take take these on and, and see if you can help these people? Yeah. And uh, she's like, this sounds a good idea. So we created the entity um, and it, it existed for a couple of years while I was still at the other agency. Um, you know, she, she doesn't have my sort of sales ability. Like she, she's not, that's not a sales guy. Well, it's not a wheelhouse. Some people are uncomfortable with it, right? Yeah. And she's uncomfortable with that role. And so when I, I try to sell it up, but I couldn't, right? I worked for another company. I'd say, well, I'm going to send you over to a friend of mine who should take care of you. And she landed a couple of them, um, yeah. but for the most part, it was hard for her, right? To be that salesperson, yeah. right? And so eventually when that company came to me, my company came to me and said, listen, we, we get a part ways. It was almost like, okay. All right, perfect. I'm going to go over here <laughs> I and mean, do that. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I stressed out. I had welts on my back. I was like freaking out, right? I didn't eat for a while. So, you know, but it was probably- Did the, you lose any weight? Um, Probably. Yeah. I don't, know, I don't remember. Just I, curious. I, yeah, I kind of keep my weight the same, you know? Yeah. When you drink the amount of beer that I drink, it's kind of hard. It makes up for the be, calories yeah, that if yeah, you're yeah, not e- yeah. even if you're not eating your food. Exactly. Um, so that was the nudge. It was that um, two nudges? I guess one was the, the companies that w- couldn't be supported by them. So that's why we created it. And then the second was I jumped ship after yeah. you know the company saying. So it's that. three years of intersecting knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. So it, in general, five years is the magic number. Yeah. Well, we've been in, we've been in existence for five years, but really, me at the helm has only been three. Yeah, five years to, yeah. to build the business. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I've yep. heard that. From that's what mu- it took here. Multi- crowd lending, multiple people. Crowd lending, the sponsor. We're at crowd lending now. Oh, look at that! Yeah, I was wondering where I was. Crowd lending for all your lending needs. Crowd lending. Yeah, so five years. That's what it takes to to really feel like you've got enough runway behind you, yeah. and you got some stability going forward. Yeah, and I think that's where the business that I'm getting now is like referrals and companies that I worked with three years ago are coming back and saying, okay, now we need this. And so yeah. that time needs to happen as well. Yeah. Right. That needs to build. Yeah. And so it's building now. I can feel it. You know, every year we've made, we've made more revenue. Um, That's perfect. Haven't, haven't really made much in profit, but our revenue has gone up. That's good. So, yeah. And eventually yeah. you're going to make some profit. Exactly. Well, <laughs> I, my wife hopes so, right? Yeah. Somebody hopes so. So it's funny. My wife's saving money so she, we can, my wife, does, we talked about this yesterday too. Like, um, my wife wants to be able to pay for our daughter to go to college. She doesn't want her to be saddled with the loans that she had from law school in Northeastern. And so she wants to pay for it. Right. And so she's like calculating the money and she's like, I got this much and I need this much by that. And I go, so in your calculations, you're just assuming I'm making no money for the rest of my life. (laughs) She's like, yes, that is my calculation. I'm calculating that you are going to make no money for the rest of your life. Wow. That's an incredibly (laughs) low bar. You're like, hey, honey, picked up a couple hundred bucks today. (laughs) Crushing it for you. I'll put that right in the savings, though. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be, I, it'll be worth two hundred and two dollars yeah. in a couple of years. I just looked at it. I'm like, really? Yeah. Okay, that's a lot of faith. That's a nice little nudge, though, to get your ass out there and make some bucks. Oh, so I, yeah, yes, of course. You yeah, know, you know, I, and, and I mean, I've been the major breadwinner in our relationship, the entire relationship, until this happened, right? And now it, now she is. Yeah, right? well, that can be hard for for people. You know, it could be hard for people who have like a, an ego that feels that, that like I don't feel I need to be like yeah. I always knew she was smarter than me. I always knew that she had better abilities to earn more than me. And uh, so it was it was only good thing. She's finally doing it. then. <laughs> exactly. God damn it. <laughs> Waited all these years. Yeah. Get off your ass. That's right, Emily. It's about time you make that money. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's not her fault. I mean, she was like, her clients love her like she's in the perfect business for her and she has the perfect clients she's yeah. in the right niche. And so, you know, I always knew that and she was just held back by that other guy, right? Yeah. They paid they paid them crap, but you know what? They enjoyed the work and, you know, in law firms, you can get sucked into yeah. putting a lot of hours in and you lose your life, right? You don't realize put, it. Yeah. And, and so she didn't have that. She had a good quality of life and the sacrifice to that was not making a ton of money, but, yeah. you know, but now she is. And this flip side, as I was telling Dan yesterday as well, she comes home from work I make dinner. Um, Isn't that nice? Yeah. He makes the dinner. Uh, well, she, I mean, he's at home doing nothing all day. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, exactly. The least you could do is go down to the grocery store and get some fresh vegetables right, for dinner. Right. I got to go down there and get my bonbons anyways. <laughs> right? that's, that's all I do all day is eat, eat, bon- bonbons, eat bonbons. Eat bonbons, yeah. Yeah. Watch uh, yeah. My, uh, all my children. Sa- Sally, Jesse, <laughs> Parker, or whatever that is. <laughs> days of our lives. Uh, Sally, Jesse, Raphael. I yeah, think yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Um, but anyways, now she the, comes the, home. and Like the hour. What's the line? Like the days of our lives. Sand through the hourglass. Like sand through the hourglass. These are the days of our lives. All right, I think we're, I think we're going over time. Yeah, on we're this. over time, <laughs> but that's okay. Wait, we didn't you get told to my. Me to remind you to tell you about 
Hustle. Yeah, Hustle and the Dorchester story. And I didn't get to tell. All right, tell the Dorchester story, and then we'll wrap up. Right. Well, Hustle is kind of more of a nudge. So, which one do you want? Give me both. What are we? Uh, where are we going? Yeah. Okay. Jesus, right. I got nothing going on. So funny. The Dorchester story was like. So I grew up in Pembroke, right? And I went to went to Archie's, and my best friend freshman year was from Dorchester. And uh, I wanted to, you know, sleep over his house, right? And so, what are you, 15, right? Yeah. You're 15 in freshman year. And so my mother was like, oh, okay, you know, you know, who's going to be home? I said, well, he's, he's only has a mom. He doesn't have a dad. And she's like, oh, okay, is she going to be home? I'm like, she actually works nights. So she's like, no one's going to be home? I'm like, no, no one's going to be home. And she's like, all right. She still let me go. I don't yeah. know why, right? And so I'm all excited, right? I go. And then, well, before that, actually, she goes, so her mom, his mom works nights. I'm like, yeah. She's like, where does she work? And I don't know if this exists anymore, if it's even called this. But I go, he told me she works at some place called the Combat Zone, <laughs> right? And I don't know if you know what the Combat Zone is. Well, you don't know what the Combat Zone is? No. So It's like the red light district. Yeah, it's not there anymore. It's not there anymore. So, so it was the red light. It was just it's on Chinatown, the, Chinatown. Basically. Chinatown, yeah. And it's where the, you know, the women of the night would, would the, yeah. show their, the would, would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! You just aged thirty years with that well, I'm statement. Tr- I'm trying to be politically correct on I your understand. podcast, right? I don't want to. I think you have to call them sex workers I don't, now. I think that's the way the uh, world is going. Oh really? I like women of the night. I think they'd appreciate that. I like better. women of the night. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. Anyways, so so my mother was I, like, I, I, I don't think I can say that I like women of the night. That does. <laughs> this is being recorded. I like there. the term. Yes. Women, f- for clarification. <laughs> okay, I like the term. All right. So, anyways, so. My mother's like, she works in the combat zone? I'm like, yeah. She was a waitress at one of the Chinese food restaurants. Yeah. Right? So she still let me go. I couldn't believe she still let me go. So I'm going to Dorchester, hanging out with, of course, his name's Fitzy, right? Right. Going to Fitzy's house. <laughs> and, of course. Uh, of course, right? And uh, John Fitzgerald. Oh, right? Of course. He, like, couldn't even get better, more than that. So, so I go to Fitzy's house and, you know, we're hanging out, watching TV. About, I don't know, 10, 30, 11 rolls around, which is typically the time I would go to bed. Yeah. Right? He's like, all right, you ready? I'm like, we're ready for what? He goes, we're going out. I'm like, we're going out? He's like, yeah. I'm like, it's like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. He's like, he's like, we're going out. I'm like, okay. So we go down the stairs. We open the door to his, his, his house that he lived in, and there's a car on fire <laughs> in the middle of the street. <laughs> I'm like, Fitz, there's a car on fire. He's like, yeah, yeah, just step around now. <laughs> so I'm like, this kid from Pembroke. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. I'm like, this is Cool. Yeah. <laughs> like I this it was car's on fire, and I'm in the, uh, midnight, and I'm walking I'm the streets out. of Boston. I'm going out with nobody paying attention to what I'm doing. No, it was crazy. It was crazy. Fitzy. Fitzy. Is yeah. he still alive? I have no idea. Oh, man. I think he left Archie's. He didn't even graduate. I think he, he left at some point. He's probably working in the combat zone. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Fitzy, if you're out there, we love you. Buddy. Yeah, we love you, Fitz. Hope you. <laughs> man of the night. Yeah. yeah, he's the man of the night. <laughs> So, anyways, the, the last thing I'll tell, I know way over time. Um, I don't think we have a time limit. No, Why do you keep referring to I, the time? I don't know, because you got a big ass clock right there. I, just, I know. <laughs> I figured it was used for something. It is. <laughs> I don't why, know why I have a big ass clock. Because I have to leave here at three o'clock to pick up my son, <laughs> and I don't want to miss that. <laughs> That's the only reason for the that clock. That clock is the nudge that it makes me yeah. ar- get you, out of do here. You, do you bring it from here into your office <laughs> and put it on your desk? <laughs> it's actually a watch. I <laughs> they need to see it. <laughs> Can we turn the camera? No, well, no, I don't don't bother. It's it's a huge clock. Fans, our fans, it's huge. <laughs> Big red letters, and yeah, numbers, numbers. Yeah, it has uh, the date. It's not a Roman numeral clock. It has it the have, date, have the, letters. the month, and the temperature. So uh, the last thing I'll say, it's the a nice nudge, clock, the nudge. It isn't. It's great. It, you can see it. Um, <laughs> hustle. You know, I think you know one of the things when you asked me to come here, I was like, oh, shit, what? Am, oh, sorry. What am I going to talk about? I know. Beep. Yeah. What am I going to talk about? And one of the nudges that that I really had when I was younger is as I was never, I was never the best, right? I was never like the best hockey player, the most talented hockey player, or you know the the smoothest guy. Or the, I was definitely not the tallest guy. I'm only five six, and I have mm. been since like eighth grade. And so I knew I had to, if I was going to be successful at anything, I had to outwork everybody. And you know I had to hustle. And that's one of the things my hockey coaches loved about me is. Like I was, I wasn't you the were goal, a hustle guy. I wasn't the goal scorer, but I was the person that got the puck to the goal scorer. Right. Like I was the, I was the person that hustled and got in there and went in the dirty areas and delivered it where it needed to be. And that's how I view everything. And that's yeah. how I also view like work. It's like, 
I need to hustle a little bit more because I don't have the connections that right. maybe other people have. I need to make those. I need to hustle a little bit more. So that was like, you know, coaches taught me that earlier, and I think that was probably the, the biggest nudge. Who that, was the coach that taught you that? I, I can't I, believe I, we're getting this t- an hour and 20 minutes into the podcast. This is like uh, unbelievable stuff. Well, can't you splice this together? Yeah, or? we'll figure it out. Yeah. Who was the coach? I don't know. I don't know. It was, I, it was oh, just well, a, There it goes was, that story. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was in youth, it was in youth <laughs> hockey. It was in youth hockey. Yeah. Well, youth hockey in Pembroke was, was basically the coaches were just kids, right? They were just they were only 20s, right? Yeah. And so, you know, it was just a 20-year-old kid that I had. You know, I was probably a, you know, mite or a squirt or something like that. He's telling you to hustle. Yeah. No, we were in the locker room after a game. And and the the, he, the coach is, like, standing on top of the bench inside the locker room. And there was, like, three or four of us left waiting for our parents to come get us. And he was just like, you know what, Dwyer? He goes, coaches like people like you. And, you know, he told the other kids, like, you know, pay attention to that. Like, you're going to go somewhere if you're a hustler. And, you know, it just kind of stuck in my Stuck head. in your brain. Yeah. I love coaching stories. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's always been that way. It's like I knew if I was gonna be the best salesperson at a company, like I, I had to hustle harder than everybody else. It's amazing. We end the conversation talking about hustlers and women of the night. <laughs> 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 well, Steve-O, you have a great nickname. Yes, you do you, too. You well. thank you. You've been a great friend. It's a big love fest here. Been a, you've been a gr- you've been a great friend. <laughs> this is my so exit. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, did I ruin your outro? You all do. Everybody does. Everyone ruins the outro? Yes. No, sorry about you that. You don't, I mean, my, my, the, the, the tone of my voice changes, the cadence of my speech changes, it's the exit, and everybody interrupts me, right? I'll, I'll stop talking. Right. I mean, <laughs> what I was going to say is that you've been a great friend to me over the years, and I appreciate that, and I'm happy you came on the show, and uh, remember, all my fans out there, give me a call, because everybody needs a nudge. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. That was fun. I like Rupee Smile. This thing's going to be cut to shreds in the, in the cutting room no. floor. No. Thank you. Bye.